In an ever-changing world, Life Changes Network presents a show about everything. This is Life Changes with Filippo, with the unforgettable, ever-insightful conversations that captivate our fascination and insatiability for the inspiring moments of real-life journeys, as we, as one, strive for higher planes of existence and a better understanding of our true selves and the world in which we live, always remembering Life Changes. This is radio like you've never felt before with tonight's guest, author, business executive, and speaker, Howard Martin. And now your host, our MC, the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Today's guest is Howard Martin, and Howard Martin is associated with some amazing organizations, companies uh, that do some very interesting things. And as I have been learning more about him and as I was getting ready for the show uh, today, a question came to my mind. And the question was one that, as far as I was concerned, I was never asked when I was a child. And I always wanted to be asked. But unfortunately, I never was. And then it's interesting that as I grew up and took on more responsibilities, working for IBM and this and that, and became uh, took positions of authority in different situations and organizations, I got asked the question a lot, and I wished I wasn't asked so often. And it's interesting, as I was getting prepared for the show, I was thinking it wasn't even the right question, whether I was asked or not. And the question was, Filippo, what do you think? As a kid, nobody cared what I thought. As an adult, people wanted to know. People uh, uh, underneath me in, in organizations. Filippo, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And now, as I was looking further into this, it wasn't as important what I thought. What was important was what I felt. And that should have been the question all along, that I feel like I should have been asked as a child and as an adult. And maybe then we really would have gotten to something interesting. You know, as I was thinking about what I thought uh, when I was asked those kinds of questions and, and how I thought, I, I came to certain conclusions throughout my life. It, one of the interesting conclusions is, for example, when I was working for IBM, there was a period within um, of a couple, two, three, four years within my time at IBM where I was really successful at IBM and IBM awarded me all kinds of awards. But during that time, I was also really successful um, at everything else I was doing. I was in some fun relationships. I was, um, uh, uh, at the, the lead in, in a, in, in a community opera, uh, in a regional opera and in, in community musicals. And I, I was just like, there, there was nothing I couldn't do. And then there was also another period like that where I was um, involved and in sitting on the board of different organizations and blah, 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 when I, before IBM. And then I, after IBM, same thing. And the conclusion I came to, what I thought was that I am successful when I'm doing a lot of different things that keep me excited or that, at, that keep my attention, uh, or that I could be creative with. Uh, and or maybe because I was juggling a lot of different things. These, this is what I've thought up until today. Until I asked myself the question, what do I feel? And interestingly enough, in each of those situations where I felt I was really successful and where the data showed I was in the newspaper and I was at the top of the awards here and there and blah, 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 the data showed I was successful. Was it because I was doing a lot of things? The answer that came to me was because I was happy and I was feeling good about myself and about people, like I said. I was in some great dating situations and I had friends that I was doing things with, whether that was the operas or the plays or the musicals or at work, colleagues that I was doing things with. And when those colleagues moved away or I moved away or when situations changed, the times where I felt I wasn't successful wasn't now that I'm looking back because I was only doing one thing or I was only doing two or three instead of five or ten, but probably because I was doing them alone 
where I wasn't doing them with people I liked and I wasn't having fun. And I think back and say, wow, what would life have been like if I had asked myself that question then? And instead of coming to the conclusion that I'm successful when I'm doing a lot of things, well, uh, now I'm making a different connection. And it's a heart connection. And it's what Howard seems to be all about. Well, not all about. I'm sure he, too, does a lot of things. I know he does, actually. But uh, the focus here is the heart connection. And I can't wait to talk to him about this. So I'll just stop here and we'll take a break and be back with Howard Martin right after this. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb and rob minerals from the body. Ionways ionizers produce a super abundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. Water from an Ionways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. An ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Well, I am Filippo, and I'm back. And our guest today is Howard Martin, who has played a key role in launching the Global Coherence Initiative, GCI, a science-based co-creative project to unite people in heart-focused care and intention to facilitate the shift in global consciousness from instability and discord to balance, cooperation, and enduring peace. Howard is also one of the original leaders who helped found HeartMath and has been involved uh, in worldwide training and consulting um, with HeartMath. And uh, during his career with HeartMath and the Global Coherence Initiative, Howard has been instrumental in delivering practical yet dynamic programs to thousands of people in audiences worldwide. Because of his universal appeal, he has conducted training programs and keynote presentations for Fortune, 5, Fortune 100 companies, government agencies, all four branches of the U.S. military, school systems, ecumenical organizations, and for publicly promoted events in over 50 cities on four continents. And with that, I welcome Howard Martin to the show. Filippo, thank you very much for having me. It's a good evening here in Northern California. <laughs> it actually is. I am uh, close to you. I'm in Monterey, California today. Wow, you're very close. I'm in uh, Santa Cruz Mountains, now, uh, probably about an hour from you. Oh, if I had known that, we might have uh, tried to connect and, and do this on camera, <laughs> but maybe another time. In the, in the meantime, uh, in connecting our, our hearts today, uh, I, 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 I feel like we're connected more than than I even knew as as talk about life changes when I was reading about you you're uh you, not only all of that that I said but you also were a successful musician and then uh, became a financial consultant and uh, and an account executive with EF Hutton and a vice president of capital funding I mean uh, this, is this all connected on the, the journey of becoming Howard Martin yeah it sure is um Early on in my life, you know, I had a, a passion for music, which led me to, in my early, um, you know, when I was around 20, 21, I was playing with people that had records out. I was a drummer, and that's when I met Doc Childry, the man who's the founder of Heart Math. Doc became my really good friend and my mentor, and uh, he was the one that really introduced me to some new understandings about heart. Doc was definitely a man's man, a very caring individual, but he put heart in some in some new language for me. It wasn't just about a squishy emotions, Valentine's Day, and all that sort of stuff. What it was was an intelligence. 
that we all have within us that was an intelligence that was super high speed it was intuitive it was that part of us that we access when we really go to our authentic self it's that place that we find in ourselves when we can move beyond our challenges and our mediocrity and accomplish things we think we can't the place inside where the hero from within is born from and that's what doc introduced me to over those years and of course as i developed more, more of that in myself Things began to change for me. Uh, I could see that music was not going to be the future for me, that it was just too self-centric, that I had a different path I needed to walk in life. Mm. It led me out of music, and it led me into things like working in finance and EF Hutton and all of that. But I figured out fairly quickly in that world that it wasn't it either, that mm. life could not be about acquisition and money only. And that's what that was about at the time when I was there. And so I went for a very simplistic life, and in that simplistic life, career was not important. Spiritual growth was, and I spent a number of years just getting by, not worrying so much about that, but putting my emphasis on how can I be a better Howard Martin, mm. and that in turn connected the dots, and when Doc uh, decided finally after 15 years of us doing this sort of work with ourselves in obscurity that he wanted to form an organization, we partnered with people here in California. I was offered an opportunity to come and, and start that. We started with literally nothing, but Doc, his ideas, and a group of dedicated people, and today we're a worldwide organization. I have the opportunities I have today um, to be on a show like yours, to have co-authored a successful book, to speak around the world, all those things. And all that's come from that thread that you asked me about just a minute ago. And did heart have anything to do with this journey? And it's always been an exploration of heart, trying to understand what I was getting from that intuitive field of information and then having the courage to go ahead and apply it. And that's what I've done, and that's uh, why I have, um, I think, a wonderful life today. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think so. I think so, too, actually. And and from uh, from what I know and from what I've been learning, and, and this feels to me like a continuation of an interview we had with uh, Greg Braden just a couple weeks ago. I wanted to ask him all these heart questions because I know he loves to talk about it, but I, I knew we were going to have you on, so I, I was, I've been holding back. So here we are finally. Let's talk about, let's talk about the heart that up until now, as, as some of us have learned to shut down and have been taught to use your brain, use your head already, right? Yeah, sure. Well, you know, brain and heart, it's all integrated. It's not a competitive thing going on, but we have to look at things in terms of intelligence a bit differently today. New intelligence is emerging now in the consciousness shift that we're all involved in. And what's happening is, is we're accessing a different type of intelligence. If we think about brain intelligence, a lot of it is sort of relegated, not that it all is, but it's relegated to memorization of facts, storage of information, the ability to, to repurpose that information and put it back out, all of those things. When we talk about hard intelligence, and that's a term that we've had here at HeartMath for, for years, is it's really that more intuitive side. It's a side that accesses something that sort of bypasses some of the linearity of thought process to reach understanding. It is associated with emotions. The emotions that are the most meaningful to us, the ones that regenerate us the most, and those emotions are always associated with the word heart. And when you think about heart, you hear about things like love, care, compassion, kindness, non-judgment, forgiveness, those kind of things. So all that relates to what heart intelligence is. So it's like a simple way to explain it maybe to the listeners, and I want to also welcome all the listeners. I didn't have a chance to do that at the very beginning of the show, but wishing all of you well wherever you're listening around the world. But – you know, it, it's a, it's, it's a different type of intelligence like AM radio versus FM radio. Hmm. AM radio, I get the news, I get the sports, I get the weather, I get the traffic, I get all that stuff and I like it and I need it. FM would be like NPR, certain music that I like, things like that. Hmm. It has a big, a place too. So when I combine those types of intelligence together, then I come out, you know, with more of a, more opportunity to, to understand myself, others, and life. So it's not a competitive thing between mind and heart. They're just sort of different bandwidths of intelligence. Okay. Uh, so, so thank you for explaining that, actually, and, and, and so well at that. That analogy really worked for me. Uh, so then uh, when we use our brain, uh, this is uh, the, like what you were doing at EF Hutton, uh, our, our, our work, our business, and all that. Uh, does the heart have a place there? 
Absolutely. I mean, it's all about people. It's all about connections. It's all about those things that, that are related to heart. I mean, we can live our lives however we want to, and, and everybody does. We have that choice. It's a planet of choice, so we do that anyhow. And so people can be, in a sense, heartless. They can be self-centric. They can be, you know, myopically focused on how they're going to come out versus how others are going to come out. When you add heart to it, you can still have that understanding and that bottom line, but you can also see a wider angle view of what's best for the whole, of how things are going to work out better for you, for others, and the whole situation. So when I was at EF Hutton, I mean, I was involved in, as I said, it was a, it was time in my life when I was focusing more on spiritual things. I could see into that. I could see what was going on there. But even in, let's say, the relationships I had with the people I did investments with, they were about heart connections with those people. There was a trust that had to be there for them to give me their money to do something else with it, right? Mm. So they had to believe in me, not as just some guy who understood finance, but as a person who cared about them, their well-being, and what was going to happen to that money. So there was a heart connection with a lot of those people. I remember one guy that was a client of mine who was a major military guy. He was a, a, a general working at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. He was in charge of the Special Forces Center. That guy had a heart, and we connected at that level. He cared about his troops. He cared about his soldiers, and he trusted me. So that's an example of how heart can be integrated into something that would look like a heartless situation when, mm. in fact, there's room for it in everything we do in our lives. Mm. Hmm. Well, you know, I, 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 I want to get into the, the science as much as we can about of this and in and, and both of the different uh, aspects that you do, heart math and the global coherence. But you mentioned uh, this uh, this man who was in the army um and i know that you've worked with fortune 100 companies and government agencies and and these are in in the eyes of some the, these companies and and the the government <laughs> and uh are part of some of what could be considered wrong in this world so the fact that you're working with them are they hearing you or are you telling them something else well what's going on there well, I think yes, for sure. I mean, and actually one of the areas that we've seen big growth in in the last couple of years has been in the U.S. military on two sides. One is training actual troops in uh, operational efficiency, preparedness to go into the, you know, to the situations they go into, giving them tools and, and techniques that we, are all part of the heart mass system that integrate into how they can function better and maintain emotional stability in the process of what they do. That can actually be saving lives if you think about it. Mm. The other thing we have to recognize is that military people are people. Not everybody in the military is, is killing people or shooting a gun, right? So there's all kinds of people in the military. The other way we work with them is with soldiers returning from the war. And we work through the, the VA centers, through the, uh, the U.S. military hospital systems and things like that with their mental health professionals. What, what a group of people that needs more heart and more care. Mm. Than those returning from right. where they've been. And so I think for me, I, I don't have to agree with what our military or government does or what business does. It's not that I'm, you know, in agreement with all of that. So I'm not just buying into everything, but I, I try to suspend some of my judgment and, and be at a more neutral place and also recognize this is if we can work with them and improve them in some way and put them more in contact with their own heart intelligence, then it's better. It's better for the type of decisions they'll eventually make. So in a way, it could be looked at as we're supporting something that's doing harm. And another way it could be we're helping to change something that, you know, that needs to go through change to be more functional in the context of the modern world. Wow. Well, there it is. So heart map. There's, there's so much there, and I know that I've only scratched the surface in my research. How, how can we net it out for people who don't know of it at all? It's a system. It's made up of techniques, methods, and we even have developed technology that can be part of the system. It was all designed with care to help empower people through these changing times. And most everything we've done along the way has had a scientific component to it. We were never trying to use science to take the heart out of heart. We were mm -hmm. using it to give a groundedness to heart that would be more applicable to the times we live in today. 
so that it can be more accepted and give us the opportunity to be in places like Fortune 100 companies in the U.S. military. So it's tools, methods, and technology designed to empower people through changing times, all underpinned with science. So it's a system, and the system shows up in a variety of forms, whether it's in a book or whether it's in a training program or whether it's in a personal growth process that we have or whether it's in you know uh, the technology devices. That's how it shows up. Those are the way in which we deliver it, and that's where it gets a bit confusing. We do a lot. We probably do too much. But basically at the core of it, it's just a system designed to put people in touch with something they already have, which is this magnificent intelligence they have within them that's called hard intelligence, and then apply it in ways that make sense for them in the context of how they live. So like you said earlier, Dr. Childers – what wasn't taking wasn't uh it wasn't all about valentines and 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 woo woo and all of that there there was science behind this and and something that that people can hang their hat on and not just have faith you did give it that yeah i think when anything gets empirical and I, i'm not a trained scientist i never was predisposed to to do haven't have science to to support my beliefs but i will say this when you have something that can be proven in a way that that, that that gives it that third dimensional, I call it, you know, understanding and framework. What it does is it increases the power of belief. It makes the belief stronger. I can describe a table to somebody, but if I can show them the table, mm. the table is more real. Mm. So it's the same with heart. You know, we can talk about heart philosophically. It's been talked about that way for thousands of years. It's It's been sung. It's been poets. It's been written about. It's been, you know, going back – 5,000 years people talked about the heart as a source of intelligence. All we've done in heart math is we've just relanguaged it in a way, given it modern context, done some hard work to put that empirical side to it, and then create tools and techniques that are simple that people can actually apply, and they don't have to. They can be spiritual. A lot of very spiritual people are into heart math, but you don't have to be. You can get into heart math and you can use it for whatever you want to use it for uh, without having to go through all the ritual of spiritual practice. So we try to make everything applicable and have a utility to it so that we could could have it integrated more into into people's lives so it could benefit them, especially at a time like now when, my God, look at the change we're going through. Uh, absolutely. I have to tell you real quickly that I I was actually quite surprised when I finally went to the website. I'm so used to seeing people's websites that uh, talk about some of these topics that are that are really pretty and 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 flowery and butterfly and all music and, and all that stuff and and then I went to the Heart Math website and I thought, "Oh, I must be on the wrong website and I went back to check the website. I'm like, no, it's the right website. It looks businessy. It looks professional. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a, it's, you know, it's hard to be, you know, one of the challenges we have as a business is, you know, we are in multiple markets. So how do we position and language so that all the markets can, you know, can be positioned properly? And so sometimes we have to be a little more down the middle sometimes. Um, and just, to, you know, so that we can, uh, appeal to all sides of the spectrum as best we can so it's it's, it's a challenge sometimes because to me it, it, it's a spiritual process it's what it always has been for me but uh, we have to to position it in ways now that we can have an impact in society that's our mission that's why we did it in the first place we could have done something else with our lives but we wanted to try to make a difference and not just be another heart-based system out of california mm -hmm. we wanted to we wanted to have a different flavor to it Mm -hmm. uh, and and it works. I I it just caught me by surprise, and I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I have to say. And so you 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 referenced uh, our times now in the way you're speaking, which I like, and and you're being very direct. Let me ask you: What are our times? What do you what are you saying is going on? We're in the process, in my opinion, of a dimensional shift in consciousness itself. Consciousness is the field of information which we draw from to create reality. And there's a lot of information in the field. It's infinite. We're only accessing a small part of it through what the you know, equipment, in a sense, we have available. But that consciousness field is morphing and it's changing. And we are moving through a major shift in dimensions in terms of the dimensional consciousness available to us. In other words, the paradigms are changing. We are accessing new information that's giving us different views of ourselves and each other in the world. And it's the biggest shift in my opinion, that we've ever had in the history of our world. And it's happening in a really short amount of time. Over a period, I would just 
roughly say over a hundred year period, and we're about in the middle of it. We're going through a dimension and a half shift in consciousness. That has never, ever happened on our planet before. Now, that's good news because it's moving us to something that's going to be a world in the not-too-distant future unlike we've ever seen before, and I believe it's going to be a much better world. But the process of getting there, doing that much in that short amount of time, creates a lot of tension. Mm. Makes it hard to understand. It creates a lot of emotional discord, a lot of angst, a lot of anxiety. The old is is still there and instated very strongly. The new is trying to come in. It's trying to, to birth itself in the middle of it. It's pushing out against the edges of the old. We have tension. And we see that you know reflected so much in what's going on in society. Underneath all that, however, is to me just positive momentum that's pushing us towards something that's going to be fantastic before it's all said and done. But we still have our work to do to get there. So that's what I see going on. That's what I see the shift as, is a dimensional shift in consciousness. Wow. And, and I'm going to assume that it's exponential and that when you say we're in the middle of it, though potentially we might have another halfway to go, it's going to to make quantum leaps from here. We'll be able to see something even more obvious very soon, I would hope. Yeah, I see changes happening monthly, you know, in terms of what I see. But I think we have to be careful. Um, I know that we're in a year 2012 with a lot of predictions based around the Mayan calendar, planetary alignments, all kinds of things. We just went through a bunch of those super moons and Venus transits and all of that. There isn't right. going to necessarily be a big bang, in my opinion, where something gigantic is going to happen. It's just going to make it all, you know, seem like it all happened. It's still a progressive process. And we're going through changes very quickly. And I see changes happening all the time, especially especially in people, the way that they're approaching life, their worldviews, their values. Um, and it's blowing me away at how fast it's really happening. So it is exponential. It is growing. It's like a, a momentum, like a, you know, like the, the analogy of just the, the, the snowball rolling down the hill. You know? Right, right. It's getting right. faster and it's picking, up, it's picking up more as it goes and it's changing things as it goes. I think the snowball is a great analogy because I – for long this for the longest time thought there there wasn't a chance of a snowball in hell that, that people would <laughs> change. Like you look that way from time to time and you just caught me on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your honesty on that. I feel so much better. <laughs> Cuz I wasn't having one of those days. So <laughs> I understand my friend, don't worry. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad we're aligned there too and uh, we're talking about HeartMath, and for those who don't know and want to know, the website is HeartMath.com, like math, M-A-T-H, H-E-A-R-T-M-A-T-H.com, and you can learn more about Howard Martin there and the work and all the different programs that they have uh, at HeartMath.com. Now, let me say the, also, if I may, just throw in yes, the HeartMath, we have a nonprofit and a for-profit. If you go to heartmath.org, you'll see a little more of that other side of heart math that you were, that you thought you might see. They're very empirical as well. It's the nonprofit side, but heartmath.com or .org, you get a great overview of the things we're doing here at HeartMath. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I hadn't seen that, so I look forward to seeing that as okay. well. But I know there's yet another thing that we want to talk about, and that's a global coherence initiative. And I know it all, it all kind of works, uh, 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 synchronistically, but um, and synergistically, but uh, we are uh, we want to focus on that after we come back from the break with Howard Martin. Right after this, there are self help seminars costing thousands of dollars, guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jump start, an awakening. Someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. <laughs> 
You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with our host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows, which include luminaries such as David Wilcock, Mariel Hemingway, Giorgio Sukalos, Marcy Shymoff, and Shadow Stevens on our archive page at our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O dot com. Remember, you can also connect with us via Twitter and Facebook and now in our own community at lifechangesnetwork.com where real people come together to share real life in real time. That's lifechangesnetwork.com. We're back. I'm in Filippo Voltaggio and our guest is Howard Martin. We've been having a great conversation about HeartMath, and we gave the website HeartMath.com, but if uh, you're interested in actually learning more besides going to the website, you can go to HeartMastery.com. That's HeartMastery.com, where you can actually do some of the tools yourself that they uh, teach to corporations and organizations and all of that. They're not the exact same ones, but they're directed to uh, people that want to learn some of these tools. So you can go to heartmastery.com for that. And now uh, we, I wanted to talk about Global Coherence Initiative that Howard also founded and especially the word coherence. I love that word, especially with the meaning that I'm learning uh, that you all are helping us uh, uh, understand. Uh, Howard, can we talk about the Global Coherence Initiative and coherence specifically? Yeah, I've heard about it. Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> it's very cool. <laughs> Just wait till you hear you talk about it. <laughs> I'm just picking on you, Felipe. <laughs> okay, well, co- co- first of With all, heart. a brief overview of coherence. Coherence is a state that we were able to identify through our scientific research that's both physiological and psychological. It's called heart coherence. You hear it being used a lot now, becoming very popular. It's a state where all the body systems are working together. They're synchronizing to what is the master rhythm maker in our body, which is the physical heart. So it's highly efficient, highly, um, you know, beneficial physiological state from our health to our mental capacities to our performance. It's also a state that is triggered by and is accompanied by sustained positive emotions. In other words, when we're in more of a positive emotional state, we're more in the coherent state. But we learn to, to activate those emotions to become more coherent. So we do, we make that effort to be more appreciative, more caring, more compassionate. That's one of the keys to getting in the coherent state. So we understand this. We've signed, we've researched it. We've got tons of research on it. You can see all that on the heartmath.org website. I, I won't uh, get into that type of research on our show tonight. Um, so we understand how to, an individual can create more of their own personal coherence. Through the organizational work we've done, we have a good understanding of how to create more organizational coherence. Now, we decided about three or four years ago that now we need to take a look at things more from the top down, that we've been into spiritual growth and processes and understanding you know, dimensions and bandwidths of intelligence and consciousness fields and all that for a long time, but we hadn't really put that forward. We also felt that it was a time now as we're going through the shift, as it's generically called, that we needed more of an, let's just call it an energetic contribution from people to create a more coherent field environment that could facilitate and make the shift a little easier on us as we go through it. So we created a uh, part of our nonprofit called the Global Coherence Initiative. Now, it's a membership organization. You can join it for free. All you have to do is go to glcoherence.org, and then you put in your email address and then your own password, and you become a member. And you get access to all kinds of really cool things inside the site, like the Care Focus Room, the, the Global Trackers, uh, free webinars and things that we've done, and a lot of things that you get there for being a member. And what it does is it brings people together from all around the world uh, to use their heart, focus, care, and their intention to really you know, uh, permeate and imprint the energetic field environment we all live in to facilitate positive change. Now, there are thousands of groups around the world, fortunately, doing something similar, using meditations, prayers, synchronous activities, intention experiments and exercises, all kind of things that are doing something similar. And we applaud all of those organizations that are doing that. What we decided to do is we decided that we would bring science into it because that's, again, a part of heart math. Our researchers develop technology that can measure changes in the Earth's energetic fields. Mm. And those fields scientifically are known as things like the geomagnetic field. 
and the ionosphere. And these fields are part of the Earth as a living system. They, they are really there to protect us from solar radiation, cosmic rays, and things like that. And without these fields, we don't live. Life can't exist without them. They're very dynamic. They're changing all the time. Science has been looking at these fields, and there are certain things they understand about them, but there's a lot they don't. One of the things that they do know now is that these fields are affecting us. When we have changes in the geomagnetic field. That can be traced to everything from starts and ends of wars to traffic accidents to surges of creativity and art and all kinds of things have been tracked for a long time to changes in these fields. Same would be true with the ionosphere. We also know that some of the frequencies, the energies we put out from our heart and from our brain are in exactly the same frequency ranges as those we find in the energetic fields. Mm. So we know they're affecting us. We know that there's an energetic relationship at a frequency level between us and the fields. So by now, some of you have figured out I'm from originally from the south. <laughs> so, I'll use, so I'll use some southern boy logic. If these things are affecting me, then maybe I can affect them. There's mm. a relationship. So what we are doing is we are placing monitoring sites around the world. These are very sophisticated sites. They're very expensive sites. Eventually, we'll need 12 of them, and we are building a ground-based system, which has never been done, to study changes in the Earth's energetic fields. To date, we have three right now that are working, sending information as we speak back to our research labs here in Northern California. We have one here in Northern California. We have one in England, in the UK. We have another in Saudi Arabia. Very soon, we'll have a fourth sensor in New Zealand, followed by a fifth sensor in Northern Canada, followed by a sixth sensor in uh, South Africa. Hmm. And so, eventually, we'll have 12. Now, what we're doing is we're beginning to do experiments looking at the effect these fields have on us, changes occurring in the fields when there are changes that we see that are major that are happening in society. And we are taking a long-term approach to this, not trying to be phenomenalistic in our claims, doing research in a very systematic way to try to see if there's, we can see if a hypothesis is true or not. The hypothesis is this, that mass human emotion – whether positive or negative, has a measurable impact on the Earth's energetic fields. Wow. Now think about that. What that would mean is that what we're feeling collectively as a global society is, is influencing these fields. We know the fields are influencing us. Now what if we could harness that in a way that could have a positive influence on these fields that reflected itself back down into society in a way that society was improving and benefiting from that? Hmm. That's what we're trying to see if it's real. Now, a lot of really cool people are a part of this. Greg Braden, you mentioned, you know, a close friend of mine. And he's a knucklehead, but he's a close friend of mine. Uh, <laughs> amazing man. Uh, Jack Canfield, Lynn McTaggart, uh, Marcy Shamoff. You know, there's a whole lot of people that are on our boards and advisory boards and things like that. Jetta Molly, amazing woman from the UK. A lot of folks. And we are... We've embarked upon this about three years ago, and what we're encouraging people to do is to join, to learn about becoming more personally coherent. There are some free things on the Global Coherence Initiative website. If you want to actually get into courses, you go to heartmastery.com. Learn to increase your own coherence level, and in doing so, you benefit yourself, but you also become a more conscious player, really, in facilitating the shift. And then over time, we'll continue to do experiments, continue to observe changes in the fields, and, and we'll see down the road whether the hypothesis is true or not. If it does prove to be true, it will be a major paradigm shift in our understanding of ourselves, our emotions, and the world. As Jack Canfield said, as he says this, and it's quoted on the site. He said to me one day, you know, this could be the greatest experiment in the history of the world. <laughs> what if you prove this? It'll change everything. Mm -hmm. So it's a major undertaking for us. It's being funded through donations, and people have stepped forward and, and funded entire sensor sites at $50,000 a piece and things like that. What we really need now is not just more sensor sites, but we need, uh, we need scientists. You know, we have a brilliant scientist, but now we need very specific brilliant scientists, you know, that can study these fields, astrophysicists, data processing people that can really dig in on the data that we're receiving. And that's the next step for us is just to complete out some of the sites that we have funding for now and then get more scientists involved in this to do the, the, the type of research we want to do. In the meantime, membership is increasing. We're about 45,000 members now, and wow. members have come from 87 different countries. 
So it is truly a global coherence initiative. They're coming from all over the place. And again, it's, uh, it, it's got similarities to other things organizations are doing. You don't have to be into heart math to be into this. You can bring whatever belief system you want to the party. We're fine with that. We have tools and things there for you if you want it. The main thing is we'd like you to consider if you want to join is to come and bring your heart. Mm-hmm. Because everybody has one. And use that heart more consciously and join with others doing this, doing the same thing. And let's see if we can make this shift a little easier and maybe a little quicker. But maybe we can take some of the rough edges off of it because a lot of people out there are struggling with this right now. And my heart's going out to them. Mm. Mm. And, and I'm sure they'll feel it based on, uh, what you're, you're telling me here. And, you know, I had a, I, I had a, a hypothesis as a child when, uh, people would tell me that reading the horoscope was crazy and maybe it is. Um, uh, but, uh, I, I, I don't necessarily do that. But as far as astrology and, and things like that are concerned, I used to think, wait a minute, when, uh, the moon affects, affects the ocean tides, uh, that big ocean is affected by the moon, uh, and, and, and the tides come in or go out because, of, and, and I'm 70% water and you're telling me that the moon doesn't affect me. It's got well, it. Well, yeah, it does. It absolutely <laughs> does. And all that stuff does. And so it's, you know, it's important to understand that there's an effect. It's also important to understand that we have still got so much conscious control over what we do with those effects. Mm. The moon, the moon being an example. I mean, every full moon puts puts out more energy. The energy is neutral. The moon isn't out to get us, but it can increase emotionality. It increases all kinds of things. They've tracked it, you know, statistically to crime rates and all kinds of things like that. It doesn't have to be that way. The moon and the influence the moon has at a full moon is also an accelerator of our consciousness. It all depends on what we do with it. Hmm. Hmm. And that's true of all the planetary stuff that's going on now, whether it's a Venus transit, a supermoon, or, you know, um, something else. It's still a time for us, I think. And, Felipe, this is one of the most important things about the shift. It is a time for us to step up and be more self-empowered, and we can do that. It's really in our hands to some degree. It's a big old shift. It's much bigger than us as people. It's much bigger than the Earth itself. But we're playing a part in it. And we have the ability to uh, to ride these waves of change with more poise and more grace. And as we do, that's going to make it easier for other people. And I'm I'm a believer that many people are already doing that. That there's a tremendous amount of uh, of good things that are happening in the world. And I like to say to all the people listening, you're probably the kind of people if you're listening to Filippo tonight that cares, and that cares about these subject matters and is making changes and has made changes in your own life. So it's going on. It's just a time now. I would say I'll talk to myself for a second. It's not a time to slow down. Mm. Mm. It's a time for me to take my next level and to look at the things I need to change and to see where I have some gaps that I haven't, you know, filled in yet and to put some emphasis on those and not be afraid of those. To go forward with, you know, with my full heart and tension and try to be a better Howard Martin tomorrow than I was today. You know, thank you for talking to yourself so that I could hear it and and we could all hear it and <laughs> feel it. Uh you know that that seems to be the biggest thing is that uh like you said at the beginning of the show the some of the old things aren't working and some of the new things aren't working yet either or at least it doesn't seem like they are in some cases and so some of us are stuck in this no man's land saying what the hell <laughs> yeah that's right and like you said, also there are some days more than others, and some days less than others. But um, so that that uh, the, the fact that there's data out there that you're creating and and that you're using that that shows us that the emotions do have an effect. Uh, and like Howard Martin said, uh, like you say, and like Greg Braden says, that that our uh, our heart's feelings affect the brain and what the brain puts out to the rest of our bodies that make uh, health happen or not happen, et cetera, et cetera, and things happen for us or not. That's true. I'm in agreement with you. Good. Um, glcoherence.org. GL. 
as in global, G like yeah. good and G L coherence, C O H E R E N C E dot org for global coherence, uh, heartmastery dot com and heartmath dot com and heartmath dot org. There's plenty of information for everybody there in all of those websites. That's true. You can find out everything you need to know about heart math and a lot of things you can participate in and do and learn. And, uh, like I said, we, we're just doing our part. There's a lot of wonderful things going on in the world and many, many millions of people around the world that are doing fantastic things. Um, we set out on a mission a long time ago as young people to improve ourselves first. And if we ever had anything we felt like was worth sharing, maybe we'd get around to it. We did and it's worked out pretty good. So we're doing our part to, to uh, help people as best we can while we continue to help ourselves. And uh, one thing as a musician myself, I am very interested in, and I had not heard about this, so I look forward to hearing this. Tell me where we could find it. You were the producer of two award-winning musical recordings, uh, including Doc Childers' Heart Zones, which spent 50 consecutive weeks on Billboard magazine's music charts. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, I'll warn you a little bit. That music was designed to... You know, for its effect rather than its entertainment value. So when people I get listen it. to it, people listen to it sometimes at first they go, man, that's some of the worst music I ever heard in my <laughs> life, you know. And then they'll say, but I kept listening to it and you know what? Now I listen to it every day, you know. Mm. And it's out there somewhere. I think we sell it as downloads off our website. We don't really sell anymore. It's all done in the early, early to mid nineties. And it was, um, you know, some things that Doc wanted to do at the time. He played keyboards. I've been in the music business. I worked with him to help produce his music. And he was really after the energetic effect that it could have. And we haven't done it in a long time. We haven't gone back into that, to that world. But Little Old Hard Zones is four songs. As I said, you know, they don't, they don't sound, you know, fantastic in terms of its musicality. They don't even have names of songs, though. Mm. And yet the, the thing got on the Billboard charts, on the adult alternative chart, it stayed there for almost a year. Wow. And so when I look back at that, I go, oh, my God, there was something in this music. It, had, it was almost like it had a life of its own. And there were people that were ready for it and people were ready to stand behind it. Like Billboard was obviously putting it up there. So Yeah, and that, well, it was selling enough that it got up there. And, you know, when I, as I go out now in the world, I'm still running into people that, you know, tell me, you know, I've still got that CD. You know, that, that came out <laughs> in 1991. You know, it's like <laughs> – and they're still they have their they have their hard zone CD and they're still listening to it. So I think that's a testament to uh, well, it was a different approach to music. I'd come from a real professional music background. Doc was like, "I'm not going to do it that way. You know, we're going to do it different." And it was like a real crunch for me at first to throw out some of the rules that you know had been embedded in me just from mechanicality and thinking I knew how it ought to be. So when Heart Zones finally got successful, I looked back with a chuckle. You know, I'd given up music to do my spiritual thing and and now after being out of the music business there was a record i was associated with it was on the billboard charts go figure <laughs> that's interesting. well you know good for you for uh for uh suspending your disbelief and uh and 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 going to those awkward places uh, so to speak <laughs> and i i hope too that one day i'll look back at those days where i had my moments of disbelief and i'll chuckle and say hey imagine that uh, yep. we, were, we were right after all. That's true. And I know one thing for sure. I don't have to wait uh, years to know that we were right for wanting you on the show. And I am so glad that uh, you said yes. So thank you, Howard. Is there uh, is there any uh, last word of wisdom you'd like to give us? Well, the only, well, first, for appreciation to you and for your 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 staff there and your team that's done a great job of uh, setting all this up. Uh, I'd like to thank you for having a show like this so that people have an opportunity to, to tune in and learn new things. I know it's work on your part. And some people, I'm sure, uh, recognize that to some degree, but you have to put this together every week and do it. And, and, and so I appreciate you for doing that. And for people out there, I'd just like to say I hope you've gotten something out of tonight's call that, you know, it gives you a sense of your own empowerment because – uh, there's so much we have in us and it's coming to the forefront now. So never lose your hope about anything. It's all moving in the right direction. And when times get a little tough, just, you know, go right back to that place of where your self security has always come from. Your own best friend, your heart. Have a talk and, and try to move on to what's next. Words of wisdom by Howard Martin of Heart Math and Global Coherence Initiative. Thank you, Howard. You have a great evening. We'll hey, be, thank you. We'll be together again soon. I just know it. Okay, goodbye to you and goodbye all right. to all the listeners. Take care. Ciao, ciao. And we'll be back with uh, our producer's rap and Mark Lejour right after this. 
Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes, thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit LifeChangesWithFilippo.com and click on our representation page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Well, after that interview with Howard Martin uh, about heart and all that, this is the producer's heart rap <laughs> with Mark Lejour and I. Heart rap. I like that. I like that, actually. I like that. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I, I think this is where we need to implement the common sense law or the law of common sense, uh, which I like to do when you get into these types of paradigm shifts. Because we're so used to what we've been, what we're not just used to, but we've been programmed by the way we've been educated and everything's so brain centric and you have to learn, you have to smart and everybody's pointing up to the brain. But yet that is always secondary to how you feel. I feel great today. I feel not so great today. I feel anxious. I feel happy. All these things were, uh, which your brain is processing. And, and so everything that he says, what they are doing, what the science is now validating makes so much sense. Um, you know, especially when you look at the AM, FM kind of analogy and, and the right. fact that we're transmitting information. Anybody that has gotten into an elevator and stood next to somebody and they were like, Ooh, I don't know why, but that person just didn't feel good. Yeah, and I, you hear it all the time. You don't have to be, you know, psychic or anything. You just have that just beyond there. Either, wow, I felt really good when I met them, or it felt, you know, you, you have that resonance, and it's because that your heart is exchanging information, and uh, and then it you know points back to uh, authors like Malcolm Gladwell and Blink, and that first quarter of a second, that exchange of information, mm. and so it's you know I think that's a lot of what he's talking about. Mm. You know, I, I, it just seems like at some point we were on a track and, uh, and then we kind of lost it. Like, you know, like the sixties and I, I'm not putting it down and I'm just saying that, um, it, like people were saying, Oh, I get the vibe or you have a good vibe or, you know, and then, then kind of it became like this not cool thing to say, but you know what I mean? Well, that's because, as typical, I think people started to think too much about it. <laughs> and that's the problem is, you know, we have these feelings and we think ourselves out of them. And that's, you know, that's life, right? We So we have a, a gut feeling about someone or we have a feeling about what is right or wrong or what we should or shouldn't be doing. And then we think through that and we go chain right they always say uh, uh pick the first answer that comes to your mind when you're taking tests or uh, or or the letter c either one i think but uh, <laughs> uh but but you know because that and don't overthink it because a lot of times that's what you'll do you'll 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 kind of fool yourself the brain will trick itself and you'll you'll move past what you know at a gut level yeah yeah or, or a heart level. How they, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I think actually you're, uh, you're, of course you're right because there's the, the gut intelligence too. And that's where a, a lot of the feeling stuff is as well. So, uh, we didn't talk about which, which has more, but, uh, like, uh, Howard said, yeah, I think it's definitely connected. I, the gut's closer to, to the heart than the head. So my, my, I think the heart exchanges information. The gut twists up a little bit, but if it's, if it's bad or the other way, it relaxes or, you know, so it's, it's all kind of, a, <laughs> I think it's connected. So do you have a gut feeling that you're right on that? 
<laughs> I do. <laughs> well, then I'm sure you are. So go with it. Um, no, you know, uh, it's interesting. He uh, mentioned everybody, uh, everybody he mentioned that that's associated with this. Uh, we've interviewed. I, I, I had no idea that any of them were involved un, until I started reading a little bit of today. And then some of the people he mentioned, except except one person. Um, that the Jude or somebody lady in England, but Lynn McTaggart and of course, uh, Jack Canfield and, and, um, uh, Greg Braden and I, I think you yeah. mentioned one other person. And but- we were originally, uh, uh, introduced to him. In fact, I was, it was suggested to me by Gary Zukov that we contact Howard, uh, at, oh, a, right. uh, at a re- reconnection event. I was having lunch with Gary and, and we were talking about these types of things and some of the work that, that Lynn McTaggart had done and, and, and you know, certainly uh, a lot of Gary's uh, written work. And, uh, and he said, you know, you have to talk to, uh, Howard Martin at How- Heart Math and with your background, you'll, you'll love the science and you guys should have him on your show. So here. Absolutely. And you just reminded me that, uh, at, uh, the last reconnection event, uh, I uh, had the opportunity to interview Gary live as well as Lynn McTaggart, come to think of it, um, in person. And uh, who else? Um, uh, Dr. Joe, Joe Dispenza. Dr. Joe Dispenza. Actually, you were in on that interview, too. That was fun. Um, and then we did a panel interview with uh, them and, uh, of course, uh, Dr. Eric Pearl. And uh, what's his name? Cryon. Oh, for Lee Carroll. Yeah. Yes, David and, and that's what I, I really enjoy about this is, is the fact that, that there's science behind these discussions. It's, you know, it's new writing, it's new discovery, but there's a lot of science that's coming to bear. And all of these different approaches that these, that, 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 uh, the, the experts that we just mentioned, uh, the, the directions that they come to the same center point from, are, are so neatly collaborative and, and cooperative. It's, it's kind of fun to watch these sciences start to overlap. Yeah. And actually it was fun to watch. Actually, I haven't seen the footage yet, but it was fun to, uh, be there, uh, facilitating that, uh, panel of these people, some scientists and some quote unquote woo woo people and some doctors and to just watch them all really be in coherence with each other. It was actually quite amazing. Uh, very exciting. And the reason I, I bring this up is you reminded me that th- they're not on YouTube yet, but they will be soon. So those who, of you who have enjoyed the Nassim Hadamin, uh, uh, YouTube video and, and, uh, uh, the Dr. Uh, Bruce Lipton and all of those, th- there'll be more coming. Yeah. So look, look, for, look forward to that. It'll be, uh, heartwarming. <laughs> okay. Any, any last heart words of wisdom? Mr. No, Lee. I, uh, I I think I've shared it all. So uh, I, I'm I'm good with this show. I think it was great. What an excellent topic, and uh, I look forward to to having Howard on again soon. Well, thank you for sharing your heart with us, and all of you, like Howard said, thank you all for for sharing your time and energy and heart uh, with us as well. We appreciate the comments. Do keep them coming in. They encourage our heart to continue to do this work. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dorothy Donahue uh, for being our. Uh, producer for the show, uh, of course, Mark Lejour and Seth Hendricks, our engineer. I am Filippo Voltaggio, once again, thanking all of you for being part of the positive changes we all wish to see in this world. Ciao, until next week. You have been listening to Life Changes with Filippo with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the BBS Radio Network and visit us online at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ionways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles with Dorothy Lee Donahue. To learn more about them, visit the sponsor page of our website. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, life changes. Now, 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 now.